Yeah, I, th I think I can introduce myself then. Um, I'm supposed to speak right after lunch, and we can't find Sven, so I offered to step into the panel because it actually fits really well, you'll see, in just a second. So I will go ahead and talk a little bit about, um, if you want to see what I was going to talk about, it's lessons from 15 years of using the brain. Uh, and I'll explain in a sec, but, but Stan, as you started talking, and we, we met outside a moment ago, and I'm like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then you start talking and I, and I look you up, and it turns out that you were already in my brain. Um, so I ha but not this richly linked up. So I had you connected to um, Legit only, and I didn't know that Legit was connected to Outfox, et cetera, et cetera, so I found your website and I started adding stuff. So I just want to show you all, and I'll, I'll explain what this is in a second. Um, I just want to do something so you see what it does. So over in my browser, I have Stan's uh, Twitter account, and I'm going, to I'm going to grab the icon next to the URL and just drag it over into this little tool called the brain. And what it does is it picks up, it picks up the title of that page, that web browser page, and it also picks up the link to it. So just by dragging that, I have now captured um, the, the, basically the address and a nicely um, tidied up name for Stan's Twitter account. So what you're staring at is a product called The Brain. Um, I've been using it since they launched the tool. I was on their first press tour. My name is Jerry Mikulski, uh, and I, w I used to be a tech industry analyst, which is how I met Brewster way back in the day when he was running Alexa. Uh, actually, when he was running Waze, right? I think I, I called you and interviewed you about Waze at one point early on. Um, so I was on the first press tour for this little company called The Brain. I was in the middle of a deadline, and I'm like, sure, The Brain, right? Sounds really like a vaunting, ambitious sort of thing. They show up, and they start showing me this, and I'm like, holy hell, this is how my brain works, because I'm a very visual thinker. I draw concept maps all the time. So I was busy drawing little, little lily pad diagrams for myself, and along comes this thing that lets me do that, and is different from all the other tools. So part of what I want to talk about is, because I've got just a brief moment, is what have I learned from using this thing for 15 years? Now, I've been using Microsoft Office for more than a decade, but you always create a new Word document or you open a new spreadsheet, right? Well, I've been filling only one brain file for 15 years. So what you're looking at here has 168,000 nodes in it. Each node is called a thought. So I click here on legit which is a thought. I click here on social search engines. And you'll see I've been collecting social search engines for a while, right? And a lot of these companies might be defunct, but it's just so weird that I'm in this room at this time. But courtesy of the Wayback Machine, which is part of the Internet Archive, I don't get rid of old companies because I can always just throw them into the Wayback Machine and see what the professor says. Um, so, and in fact, uh, just for grins, I can jump to any thought through my brain just by typing the first couple characters uh, of what it is. So I can I now just jump to the Wayback Machine, and you'll see that I've linked it to the Wayback Machine, which is from Rocky and Bullwinkle. Right? So we need to, we need to you know, credit where credit is due. So you see that everything is kind of in context here. So uh, let's see, Rocky and Bullwinkle. Uh, let's just link this to Squirrels. Right? So now I've just made a link up to Squirrels, Rodents. So we've got Rocky and Bullwinkle. And it's okay that I'm just lumping them together. I don't feel like, like I'm offending them. And I think I have moose. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't seem to have moose as an animal, so let's just put it in. And moose are kind of like cows, but not really. So let's see where I've got cows. I've got them under cattle. That won't really work. Livestock. Moose don't make good livestock. They're not domesticated. Let's just put them under animals for now, and I'll worry about it later. So I'm going to drag here and connect moose. Now, if I, were, if I had a moment more time, I would go look up the Wikipedia entry. I'd drag it in so that moose links me to the Wikipedia page, et cetera, et cetera. Everything kind of lives in context. I've been squirreling away like this for 15 years, not taking a lot of time. Because how many of you use bookmarks in your browser? Raise your hand if you use your bookmarks. How many of you try to maintain your bookmarks in your browser? And, and, ha and then of, of those of you who do that, how many of you are happy with the experience? Two people. And you guys, really, because you're making, with terrible tools, you're, you're doing something really, really difficult, and you're making, making sense out of the world. So this tool is what I use instead of bookmarks. I still use a little bit of bookmarks in my browser, so I have some fast click things across the top. But basically, this is where all my bookmarks go. And what's interesting is that every thought doesn't have to have a bookmark. So let, since I'm probably almost out of time, let me just jump to Oh, good. I've, got, I've bought a little bit of time. 
so I don't have to speed up so much. So let me go to lessons from my brain and just talk about what I've learned from doing this for 15 years. Um, and I loved your, I, I want to put my mom to work with a scanner. There's actually a scanner in my mom's closet, which I took there to try to get her to sort of, mm-hmm, -hmm, too hard. So I'd, I'd love to be able to do that. So this is my version of, of this kind of context, and I'll, I'll talk through a couple of these thoughts here, because I wrote down uh, some ideas. So one thing that's happened for me, for example, is that when I put things in my brain, the first thing I do is I think about where should it go, right? Oh, and, and Mark is here, sorry, so um, thank you. So Mark is another person who's been feeding a particular tool for 15 years? Since 1984. Since 1984, so not that long. <laughs> He's been feeding one database for, for that long, which is mostly a textual, sort of text search kind of database, but uh, is, a, is a different and interesting way of chronicling your life. Uh, so when I put things in my brain, the first thing I do is I, I decide, what am I going to link it to? What am I going to hang the new thing under? Because everything needs to go in context. I don't want things just lying around as orphans. So that's pretty quick to find it. So it might be animals, it might be Rocky and Bullwinkle, whatever else it is. Um, then seeing what's there, so when I go to animals, I look around. I'm like, oh, animal slavery. God, what's that? And all of a sudden, wandering here refreshes these neural pathways. So this brain isn't, one of the things I've learned is that I'm not just sort of offloading thinking and offloading memory. This thing is busy improving my memory. So my recall on books that I care about, blog posts, whatever else, is pretty good. It's like really good. I can just stand up in conversation and start talking about authors' works and whatever, which are all in here. Like. Um, the Underground History of American Education by John Taylor Gatto is right here with a lot of context, as you can tell. So what, I've, what I do in many cases when I really like a work is I will debrief into my brain, right? So whatever happened in the book shows up underneath the book in the brain. Well, a really good illustration of this would be uh, the tipping point, which I need to spell correctly in order for it to be found. There we go. So here's the tipping point. So for example, under the tipping point, I have uh, the three rules of the tipping point, which then has under it the law of the few, the power of context, and the stickiness factor. The law of the few is about connectors, mavens, and salespeople, right? So under connectors, for example, I have Lois Weisberg, Paul Revere, and Roger Horshaw, the people he mentions in the book, and then I have the connectors I know, like Joey Ito, and David Eisenberg, and Napier Collins, right? So if I, let me just bounce up for a second because the law of the few and the three rules of the tipping point, uh, this is my favorite thought in the brain. Now, the resolution here is not great, so let me try uh, making the text a little smaller at the risk of you not being able to read much of anything. There we go, that might work better. So you'll understand this in a second. Enumerated wisdom, 10 big myths about copyright explained, 10 characteristics of wicked problems, 10 decisions that made a difference in internet development, 10 email addresses that will be useful when you, need, when you, uh, when you no longer have internet access, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, 24 standard causes of human misjudgment. And, and every one of these things, so 10 characteristics of wicked problems goes up to wicked problems, goes up to uh, Horst Riddle, who's the guy who first started talking about wicked problems. He was at, at Berkeley on the faculty. So, you can link kind of anything to anything. I've been doing this for 15 years. It hasn't taken that much energy. Another lesson is, I just don't know what to do with this at this point. Like, it's incredibly fruitful for me. I publish it online for free at jerrysbrain.com. So feel free to go to jerrysbrain.com. You can wander through my brain at your, um, I need to spell this properly. Um, feel free to wander through my brain. I'd love any content, I mean, any, any suggestions or whatever else. But I don't really know what to do with all these connections because the brain isn't very collaborative. What do the connections show? The connections, so, um, the connections only show whatever I've decided to, to do with them. Um, there's no semantic um, content here and it doesn't tell me what to put where. So for example, um, let me give you another useful example because I used to be a tech industry analyst, right? So if I just type K-L-E-I, I, I can go quickly to Kleiner Perkins. Now I've decided just through use, and it was actually a really important part of my being happy about using this tool that it didn't tell me how to do this. I got to appropriate it to my uses. So I decided to put you know, um, category above VC. So if I click above, it says VC firms. So I click here and here's a bunch of VC firms. 
you know, there's actually more VCs. These are kind of the primary VCs. I have a thought called other VCs. Here we go A through C. If I scroll to the side, you'll see these. Now we're over at the Zs, right? Now, for pretty much any of these guys, Trans Cosmos USA, never heard of them. I heard of them sometime. I put them in, right? They funded B Vocal and Z Note. What did B Vocal do again? Oh, they were a voice portal. Who else did voice portal stuff? Oh, AOL by phone, Hey Anita, OmniMail. I've forgotten this. This is a really long ways back. Now, the brain is time stamping everything so I could look up in the details about any of these thoughts when I put them in, which would date when they were hot, whatever, whatever. But there's no real API access to that information. All I could do is export this as XML tuples, which it will do, but I've never tried to do because my brain is kind of big. Back there. Can you make notes on your yes. So there's a notes. So what I've hidden here, just so it doesn't overwhelm everybody, um, I've hidden the, there's a notes field down here to the left. So let me drag it up a little more. Uh, but up. There we go. So this down here is basically an RTF field. So I could write notes in there, and it would stay attached to this thought. I almost never use that. It's weird, but I'm trying to make this be a, a sort of a meta layer. I'm trying not to pour a lot of text in. I'd rather put notes in other, I'm using Google Docs a lot, or blog posts, or tweets, or whatever else. And then down here, any attachments. So tell me, for instance, the, um, the URL for tell me would be down here, which I could then edit, follow, do whatever else with. So those things are all attached to the thoughts. Please. Uh, can, one, can one label the links and perhaps show in color? Yes. Yes, yes, and yes. In fact, there is link typing and thought typing and colored links and all that kind of stuff, none of which I use. So Harlan Hugh, the inventor of this tool, has added tons and tons and tons of features. Um, I'm basically using what he started with 15 years ago because it works beautifully for me. And one thing I, w one of my lessons, if I can go back to lessons from my brain, one of my lessons is that um, the simplicity of it the quickness with which I can put something in and then not having to click on this is a book, this is this, this is that, and, and you know, all the added stuff is what made it really easy and accessible and useful for me to, to use. Now, that said, I wouldn't mind if there were some watch, watchdog intelligence sitting next to me that said, oh, you just put a book in. Can I label that as a book? Great, done. That would actually help, and I'd love for somebody to go through this with semantic search of some sort and begin to infer and enrich what I've got here. That would be really, really awesome. That has not happened. That's all right. That's what we were trying to avoid earlier, the sound he just made. Yeah. The web website of the so software. Pardon? Website address for the software. The software's at thebrain.com. And I, for full disclosure, I've been an advisor of theirs forever. Um, it's just it's changed my ability to remember stuff, so I'm, that's why I'm talking about it. Question there, and then over to you, to you Mark. Uh, so it's just links, though. There's no, you, you mentioned using uh, the Wayback Machine earlier, so there's no intrinsic archive of the content that you need to. You can. Have it, it's gone. No, I actually have turned, I don't use the feature, but you can index the web content that's on here. I don't know that it's capturing all the pages, but it's indexing the content of the pages at least. I turn that off because I really don't want the index to become Gigantor. I just want the links to the pages. And I'm kind of relying on Google and, and Brewster to sort of do the heavy lifting on the back end, which may or may not work. So it's not a complete archive, but it has the capability. I just don't use it because I'm, at this point, my brain's kind of slow when I look for stuff. It, it used to be completely instantaneous, and now I type something in and I wait a second and a half. Um, so I'm trying to trade that off a little bit. Mark. Hi, Jerry. Um, one of the recent things I've learned from using uh, Personal Digital Archive for a long time is that I had thought that I was using an appliance. And it turned out that actually I was using an instrument. Where the difference is, you know, if you don't know how to use a piano, you're really not going to enjoy it that much until you really are, are practicing and that that swimming in that expertise I completely forgot that I had yeah. developed this over You sort of years. take it for granted after a while yeah. just because you've picked up the skill and it's just innate. So as far as you know what I'm doing with my thing, that's a big part of a realization that hey, I'm not creating an appliance. I mean I need to create a you know digital appliance, but it it, it it's really has to be more of an instrument. Could you talk to that not seeing your expertise in that? Yeah. Um, 
I think I underestimate some things that I do, um, and that's a, a longer story in a different way. But one thing I will say is that years and years ago, when I still lived in New York, uh, Jason Calacanis, who is now more notorious than he was then, um, he basically um, sent me an email that said, Jerry, I just spent uh, a, a, an hour going through your brain online, and I think I learned more about you than I would have in an hour of us just talking. And he had run across, um, uh, he had run across this thought, oops, there we go, he had run across a thought called Things Dad Taught Me, among a couple other things, I'm sure. But, but you know, there's things in here that are not just business, not just who did Kleiner invest in and what's going on, but stuff that I care about, stuff that's meaningful to me, and it all, you know, astronomy is really astronomy, like, there's stuff there, right? It's pretty full. So, so he had seen that. So it seems to me that without any training and without knowing the subtleties of how to use it, it's at least possible to browse it and get a lot out of it. Um, nobody's tried in an automated fashion to harvest or enhance or do semantic linkages or whatever else of what's in my brain, which I'd be thrilled to do. If somebody wanted to do a psychoanalysis of me by looking in my brain, rock on, I'm your victim, you know, come on down. Um, I, I'm totally intrigued by what that would be, and I, I would love for a little while when, before um, Danny Hillis's uh, MetaWeb sort of went under and then kind of got bought and disappeared, I was in a conversation with them to try to suck the brain into Freebase and to see what could happen there, but that didn't really happen for a couple architectural reasons and nobody had the time to really give it. So I'm, I'm really curious what, you know, what to do with it and where to go. Other questions? Please. How has using the system affected my organic my organic memory? It's improved it considerably. Um, as I was saying, when I, when I put something in, I refresh, I look around, and occasionally I'm what I call gardening the brain. I'm sort of pruning and eliminating and consolidating. Like, I had Stan in twice. I, I had Stan Lee, your, your full name, and then I had just Stan under, uh, uh, under legit. And I realized, oh my god, it's the same guy. So I eliminated the old one, consolidated, moved around. So I'm always doing that a little bit. Um, would it affect my ability to to recall? I, I this is going to sound terrible. I pity people that don't have a brain because I've seen a lot of amazing shit online and everywhere else, and I now can find it again, and I, and it builds. It's cumulative for me. Where Something is a year old, it's out of your brain. And I, I know a lot of people who say, well, I just blog and then I search, my, you know, I search on Google and it turns out my blog is right at the top of the, of the hits. You know, Pete Kaminsky did that, Doc Searles does that, but they're A-list bloggers, so that, you know, that would kind of work for them. I, I don't know how you do that otherwise. But Delicious is the closest thing I've seen that came to a tool that people were using in a really organized fashion. And there's also um, some of the bibliographic tools that are out there now, Mendeley and a couple others that are, that are kind of like this, but they're very geeky. Um, so like that, please. So where does the data live? So the data that I'm using right here lives on a file on my PC um, that the brain creates, and I don't know its data model. I don't understand how he does this. And then I hit a sync button. I basically hit the sync command once a week or so, and it then communicates with web brain online and exchanges differences. Okay, and uh, I assume that in the 15 years you have changed that PC. Oh, yeah. I have had many more problems trying to get Outlook to work on a new machine than the brain. The brain pretty much has worked just fine. Moving iTunes or Outlook is a nightmare for me. I'm no longer on Outlook. I'm on Gmail and all that, but, but it's been much less problematic than those. You can, in fact, run the brain on a fob. If you want to move from machine to machine, you can, you can install it and run it from a fob with a data file on the fob so that you can kind of just move around that way. That'll work. Yeah, instrument versus, yeah. Yeah. Sure. So the brain was actually useful within 100 thoughts just because now you can find stuff and it's pretty easy to use. And the early, the process, 
this is one of those things where the journey is, is a, a lot of the joy. The process of figuring out where you want to put things, in, it's like decorating a home. And now if you hate decorating your home, it's not going to be so good for you. But I really loved, and then nowadays I'll hit something, uh, a, a year ago I realized I didn't have the four directions of the compass in there organized. Right? I had Northwest, I had a bunch of stuff, but they weren't really in there. And every now and then I'll hit a thought and I'll be like, holy hell, that thing's not in here? But it was useful incredibly early. Um, now, there's a whole other thread of thought, which is about what, other t what about other tools like Mindomo and uh, Mind Manager and uh, uh, Mindjet and so forth. And, and I've got a bunch of thoughts here. So there's a, there's a thought called Concept Mapping that has 25 or 30 things under it. There's another one called Visual Search Tools that has maybe 60 or 70. There's another thought called Visual Analysis Tools that has, let's call it another 60 or 70. Not all of these are alive anymore. These are all competitors to the brain. Because these are, and I'm not really, I haven't been totally anal retentive about, is it really an analysis tool or a I just kind of threw them in as it felt right over time. But that collection under those four or five thoughts is kind of the bundle of competitors. I haven't seen anything like this that A, lets me author, because 80% of these tools are browsers only through some information space. My ability to come in here and mess with it is magic. <coughs> my ability to annotate, change, and I wish that I could switch between my brain and our collective brain. So one of the lessons that I have in here is, you know, why can't, um, why can't Jeff and I look at our brains together and then say, where do we have a lot of interest overlap? Where does he have particular strengths that I should point to from my brain as an expert? And, and I, had a, I had another experience um, a long time ago. I was messing around with either my family or Ancestry.com or one of the genealogy sites. And, um, and this fits nicely with what, what you were doing earlier, Stan. And, and I got this aha, which is there's criteria for a legitimate person, right? A real unique individual. And it's birth record, death record, merit. I don't know what it is. There's a minimum set of things that say that this is, in fact, a unique individual. And as I was putting my own family in, I was entering people and I thought, oh, at some point I might find somebody who's already in, you know, Ancestry.com. And then I'm clicking into possibly the great tree of humankind. I just had this little mental, oh, wow. Uh, then my little work here in the little corner of the world clicks into the large tree of everything. And at that point, I was already using the brain. And I thought, oh, wow. If we could do that with each other and snap into what we know and do it together, that would be genius. Right? And, and one of my big quests right now is how do we do collaborative sense making? How do, how do, we, how do, we, um, how do we understand things? So I'll, I'll show you one more thought, and then I think I probably have to wrap up. Um, so I have a, let's see if it's over here. So I have a thought called My Beliefs. Um, and I, I believe everybody should have one of these. This is just me being authoritarian. Um, but I, I like sort of saying, here's what I believe. And if, if a lot of us did this and then could match up these beliefs, we'd figure out that we really agree about these 80% things. We should really sit down and have a nice dinner with some wine over these 20% things and figure out what we mean and go deeper into it. And if we did that with more history, with more time, and allowed that to happen, we might actually disagree less and achieve a little bit of world peace. But the problem, there are many problems that interfere here. One of them is the business models of the, the industries of culture. The entertainment industry, the news industry, all those guys. They, their business models are built on flow because we have to watch the ads that they insert in the flow, otherwise they don't make money. They hate it when we do things like TiVo or, you know, VCRs, the Go Video lawsuit, all this stuff. They just hate it when we try to record and create stocks of information. Never mind deeply interwoven stocks of information. That just breaks their business model. Now, that keeps us from achieving collective sense making. It keeps us from understanding each other better. So the very business models of entertainment, news, all these things we think are so cool are screwing up the world in a lot of ways, which is why I'm a huge fan of openness, open source, linkages, and then trying to figure out other ways to reward creators for creating, which is another project idea that some other day. So I'll, I'll stop here. Good. So let me pull off mine. and Great. And I will take mine offline and answer questions over here for a moment while we do that. So let me pull the mic. Uh, other questions? We've exhausted all the questions. I love this. Please.
This is a great way to, I'm going to repeat your question as you're going. Sorry. At, at the end, I will. Right. So have I used this for contact management, which um, I thought of and then did not do. So all the contact info I have for people is still in, right now, Google Mail, Google Contacts, uh, and Plaxo, and LinkedIn, and my whole network is on you know, LinkedIn and Facebook and God knows where else as well, including Orkut way back when. Um, first, I don't think I could ever manage all those connections as quickly as, and I would waste a lot of time trying to manage those connections instead of all the stuff that's happening right now on LinkedIn and Facebook and so forth. It would be very interesting to have a brain perspective on those social networks. It would be really fun to be able to see my LinkedIn connections through the brain. Um, I also don't do friendships in my brain. So I put in like parent-child, I put in people's kids, I put in marriages, I do all that kind of stuff. I'll get out of the way of the beam. I do all that kind of stuff in the brain for sure. I do mentors. So if somebody studied under Leo Strauss, I'll put, you know, influenced by Strauss kind of under it and that kind of thing. But I don't do friendships, and I also don't put in who recommended something to me. But just my own choice, that feels like TMI in the brain. It feels like it would just really, uh, you know, overconnected in a way, and it might reveal stuff I don't necessarily want to say. We're done? Rockin', thank you. Thanks very much. No, don't be sorry.